how can you help I can. the child soldiers mm -hmm. who, whose years of growing up have been thrown away, so to speak? You know, there's an amazing thing that happened in Liberia. Several amazing things. Number one, the Liberian war did not encompass any landmines. Secondly, the Liberian soldiers, you, some of them, they, it's, very, it's, very, it's comfortable to use the word child soldiers to get money. A lot of the people that fought in Liberia while they were young, uh, most of them were not actual combatants. They followed their brothers into war, they at home with them shining the shoes. But I think, I think uh, one of the things was that after the war, when I opened up the schools, I found that, that some of the best disciplined individuals that went back to school were the combatants. So one important thing in Liberia is that the combatants did not lose a sense of discipline and responsibility. What we need to do immediately, immediately, get the schools open, get the teachers going, bring in some teachers, move them back, get the students back into school. Liberia does not have the means for private school, but if a, if a child is brilliant and has to go to a private school, get him into school. Because if you talk to a lot of the combatants, the first thing they say, I want to go back to school. They should be given a quick start, not a talking start, a quick start. Did you use any child soil at all? Uh, the government of Liberia, you know, it was different. For us, we, the, the degree of care for the government, uh, the government was going to be held responsible because there are Geneva Conventions that prevent such actions. And so the government had to be very, very careful. In fact, if, if you look at the actions of the government, when I, before I left Morovia, all prisoners of war were released by my government. Lord and Model until now have not presented any prisoners of war from the government. But we were responsible enough to know that we would have been held accountable under the Geneva Convention if we did not return prisoners of war. I released prisoners of war and all agents of Lord and Model that were captured, we had them released. Okay, because we felt that the degree of care, the responsibility would be harder on us. And people would say, well, as a responsible government, you should have known. And we have to follow that. And, and what would be your formula, if there's any, for lasting peace and democracy in your home country, Liberia? One, all Liberians should come together, hold a peace and reconciliation conference, get off their minds whatever has been bugging them over the years, and settle down. Everybody must go home. I think it is important. The second thing that I think is important is that Liberians should fight very hard to establish an identity of their own. We don't have an identity. We are trying to copy too many different cultures and it's giving us a hard time. I think we must be about our country. Two solutions. I think Liberia will have peace. And what do you have to say about the one world government issue? It's dangerous. Um, as I look at my own case, I know there are lawyers at the United Nations. I'm sure legal counsel at the United Nations should have advised them uh, that, for example, the one, the last resolution passed against me is, is an unlawful resolution. The United Nations deals with nation states. But they have chosen to deal with, deal with my family. It reminds me of a typical scenario where the, the president squanders money and the wife flies around the world dressing and the son loots the rest of the country. It's all maybe, maybe a good term paper, but that's not the reality in Liberia. But I think this is a test case. The government of Liberia was denied a right to self-defense with an arms embargo while a rebel war continued, financed by powerful nations. The commodities are stopped. The government is not able to take care of its people. I can almost say genocide occurred. Then the president is chased out of office, and after he leaves office, uh, he is said that his assets should be frozen. He, uh, the United Nations now has assumed jurisdiction. And, and this is, these things happen 
almost in terms of uh, receivership. But Liberia is not on a trustee ship. So I think this is a test case by some powerful countries in the establishment of the one world government. So if you can jump over your government and you can go into a country as the Security Council and you can extract an individual or a group of individuals against the laws of a member state, I think this could be the beginning of uh, the test for the one world government. That decisions in countries are, going, are, are just going to be mere, mere paperwork and the final decision is going to come from New York and it's going to be like New York, the United Nations, but who's going to control it? The powerful, the most powerful members of, of, of the Security Council are going to have it their way. I think it's dangerous. There's been something wrong here. Can you imagine in Nigeria? I mean, for because Nigerians, uh, some Nigerians have been concerned about my being there. Can you imagine in Nigeria where a Nigerian, maybe a former leader or official of government, that your country is not pursuing? A resolution is drafted at the United Nations that's saying that Victor Owusu here must be, uh, his assets must be frozen, this must happen to him and that might, must happen to him against the wishes of the Nigerian government, the Nigerian legal system, and the people. It's crazy. It's wrong, and I think that uh, we ought to be very careful because this move, this globalization, the one world government, this could be the beginning, and Liberia is a test. Many other Nigerians are very angry about your stay in Nigeria, and this has to do with the two Nigerian journalists that were killed in the war in Liberia while you were president. Did you kill them? Two Nigerian journalists were killed by a colonel of the then MPFL by the name of Putu Major. Putu Major was arrested. He was court martial, tried and executed for the killing of those two journalists. My, the MPFL then, I dispatched my information officer here to Nigeria, met with the families of the two journalists, explained the issue, uh, offered them a small uh, envelope in, you know, in consolidation with them. They refused it. The killing of those journalists were wrong. I did not accept it and I took action. Those two journalists that were killed caused the execution of Colonel Putu Major. You go to Liberia now and ask anyone, they will tell you, Putu Major was executed by the MPF under my command. It was nothing that I condoned, and the families of those journalists know that I did send. In fact, it was Mr. Reginald Gurich that became my Minister of Information. At that time, he was a press officer that was dispatched to Nigeria here to meet with those families. I did not condone it, and I'm very sorry. We apologized, but we did take action. There was no way we could have returned their lives. But Colonel Major was executed by court martial for the murder of those two journalists. There was a, there were also two other instances and a couple of other instances, mm -hmm. Ekoma soldiers and the, the Nigerians who uh, sought refuge at the Lutheran Church. What's your story on those? But the Lutheran Church, it, it was not during my time. But I tell you one amazing thing at the Lutheran Church: my father was murdered in the Lutheran Church. So it was not doing my time, I'm not responsible. It was that my father, Nelson Philip Taylor, was murdered in the Lutheran Church at that particular time by the then government of Liberia. Samuel Kaya, don't know. I was not responsible for that. And this is a confidential uh, conversation with President Bassinger. I said, President Bassinger, but I want you to do something. Will you ask this international community to bring forth some facts. For three years, I have been accused of having billions. Well, do they like me so much that they do not want to disgrace me? That's why they have not brought forth in one newspaper one iota of proof. Come on, I mean, how much, how much can you do? I look at this as, you know, when security officers are being trained, you read a scenario. This is a case scenario that was written. So it is impossible for a president may be in a third world country not to loot his treasure, so Taylor must have done it. Well, can ECOWAS, and they are doing it, can the AU, can they give something to them? Say, well, here is it. This is what this guy did. Here is a bank account in Timbuktu. If it does not exist, somebody ought to come back and say, it does not exist. 
as simple as that. What would be your memorable moments in the United States during your sojourn there? Obtaining my education. That was the most important time for me. A deep appreciation, I tell you, I, I have a deep appreciation for uh, not everything that uh, the United States stands for, but I have a deep appreciation for a lot of things. I think democracy, the rule of law, respect for human rights, I think are valuable tools. Uh, you know, there is, uh, the, the, there is a fine line between power and control. You know, sometimes you can have a lot of power, you can lose control with that power and it becomes very dangerous. I think um, I, some sad things have happened. Faulty intelligence have led to uh, what happened to me. I think uh, on retrospect, if they were to go back and search intelligence, they would find out, oh Jesus, we made a mistake. I mean, how, how, how could intelligence say I have money in the bank when I don't have it? If I had it, I would use it. Hey, I would use it. I had sufficient time before the resolution, if I had money to have moved it. But even if I had money to have moved it, any bank transfer or movement of heavy cash is known. How do you hide dollars? So my memorable time in the United States was uh, during my school days there, uh, and the development of a deep deep sense of appreciation of, uh, of a lot of things that they stand for. I do believe that uh, uh, they stand for a lot as the world's only superpower, and I regret very much, I tell you, I regret very much I was not able to get them to understand me because uh, with Liberia and the popularity that I have in Liberia, if I were permitted in the next elections, I will sit in Nigeria, if I were permitted in the next election, I can win the next election because Liberians still know that the wrong thing that has been done to me. But I have a deep appreciation for them. I regret that we did not, because for Liberia, for Liberia, it is important for the president of Liberia and an administration in Liberia to have strong, good working relationship with Washington. Any failure to do that is your downfall. And I regret that we did not develop that.